If your office sends you a photogrammetry scan with PIC or iCam and you don't know what to do with it, then this video is for you. Today I will demonstrate the entire design process from pre-design before surgery day, how to align and sort all the scans, what implant library to choose and of course the design of an all on X case. After this tutorial, you can impress your office with speedy and quality designs. Weeks or days before the actual surgery, I want to get a head start of the design. Therefore, I'm going to use Pontic Wax Up and I'm going to create a case from the pre up model, upper and lower pre up model. I'm going to import all the scans into ExoCAD and I can even use a smile creator if the office sends me some photos. I'm not going to go too much into detail in the smile creator because I have a whole other video for this one, but this gives you a lot of time ahead of the actual surgery date. You can take your time here, create a perfect pre-up design that you can then apply during the surgery day. I like this method because I can share this even with a doctor if they like the library, if they like the overall smile design and then when surgery day comes I can just use this design and convert it really quickly into the actual design. What I like here in Smile Creator is that I can eliminate any canting. I can try out different libraries, I can try out different shades and share it with the patient and then I'm gonna export it design with a model so I can align it later on to the pre-up scan and I'm also gonna export it as design without the model and I can use this one later for my actual conversion and you will see in the next step how I'm gonna do this. The implant sides always have the anatomic wax up. I'm going to have it screw retained with this extra scan body scan and I'm going to design it digitally. I also have a pre-up which I designed previously. Apply all the different settings with control and click on the corresponding tools. For the pontics in between the implant side I'm going to use pontic wax up and I'm going to apply everything to the teeth in between. Save the order form and go into the design. Now it's time to import all the scans. I'm going to have my post-surgery scan, which is my main MUA scan with the white caps on there. And I'm going to import all the scans that I have. Now it looks really confusing because I need to align everything. First, I'm going to import some other scans I have. And these scans are, for example, the design and model that I've I'm created. I'm going to have an upper pre-up and bite, a lower pre-up and bite, and I'm going to have the upper with the scan markers in place. I'm going to import all these cases and then I'm going to go into the actual aligning process. It looks really scrambled up, but once we go through all the steps, it's really easy. This is what we're going to start with, the pre-up in bite. You can see that the doctor placed arch tracers into the palette. And these are really helpful and you can order them from digital arches because it will give you an additional reference points. That is especially difficult when you have lower scans because you don't have too many reference points. In this case you have the palette and the rugi as reference points so it's really easy to align this but when it comes to a lower it can be sometimes challenging. So first we're going to align the pre-up scan to the pre-op scan with the scan markers. Then we're gonna have our post-surgery with the white caps and we can use this to align it with the actual arch tracers. Then we have our STL that's the PIC scanner exported and we can align it to the white caps on the actual working model, the MUA model. I'm gonna align everything. If there are little discrepancy, don't worry about it. This might happen during the scan. Always trust the PIC scan. Now everything is aligned. You can see my pre-up design looks really, really nice. I have an exposure of the roots here, but if I look at the actual design that I made, you can see that on number 11, half of the tooth is actually missing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out the existing pre-up model with the one where I don't have the upper arch in there. It gives me a warning that I'm swapping out the pre-up model, but that is okay. I'm gonna use the design without the model. 
because now I can copy and append this model really quickly. Really important, I have to adjust the scan data orientation. If you're working with a doctor who sent you some SPIC scans, you have access to the support team at PIC. Just contact them and they will send you the according library that you need. In this case, these are Straumann white caps and the doctor used Straumann 6.6 .6 white caps. I'm going to leave here a link to the Straumann website where you can actually see which scan caps, white caps the doctor was using. These white caps are aligning perfectly with the library and you have to select the according library that matches to the white caps that the doctor was actually using. Exocad usually does a perfect job cutting out the white caps out of the main scan, but sometimes when the alignment is not 100%, you have to do it manually in edit mesh. Then you can close all the holes to make it more visible for the next step that we are doing. We're going to go under freeform mesh. We're going to select the smoothing tool first and we can smooth out all the overlapping and all the jagged tissue. Remember, this is surgery tissue. It's really soft, so it's malleable. Then under add on remove tool, I'm going to go in there with the brush tool and I'm going to carve out an emergence profile around the multi-unit sides. I want to see a little bit of the head. And again, this is surgery tissue. It's really soft. It's not like regular heart tissue that you have on a regular healed tissue. Then I'm going to define my emergence profile. Usually on all on four cases and especially on multi-unit cases, you don't have to do this, but you will see in a later step why this is important. Now we're going to go into the actual tooth design. I'm going to bring up my pre-op model from the pre-surgery design and I'm going to align it really quickly to my design. It doesn't have to be perfect. All that really matters is that I don't have any overlapping into the contact areas of the pre-design. Once it's done, I'm going to go under abutment bottoms and set the profile border height to zero. Then under freeform, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adapt the basal to zero. Under adapt to pre-up, all we have to do now is click adapt model tees and the magic will start. Under freeform and under the tab adapt, I can dial in the occlusion now. I didn't do it in the pre-design because it was not necessary. Under gingival base design, I'm going to outline my borders for the tissue first. Remember, all on four cases are not dentures, so the area is fairly small. Then under add and remove, I'm going to add little areas first where there's not enough tissue. Then under anatomic, the small regions, I'm going to fill up the interproximal spaces, the interproximal gingival spaces between the teeth. When I'm happy with the design, I'm going to click next to create the virtual wax up. One of the most important steps in the whole design is to freeform the virtual wax up. Therefore, I'm going to go under smooth and flatten. I'm going to put the strengths and brush size to a medium and I'm going to smooth out the borders at the basal area. If I'm hitting the two CJs for some reason, I can use the add and remove tool, hold shift and use a small brush to redefine those. Some of the abutment bottoms emergence profiles are not ideal. Therefore, I'm going to highlight all the analogs and go under abutment bottoms. Now you can see why I highlighted the emergence profile because I can have the bottoms. I can hold the control key, click on the margin and add some points if I need. I'm going to go to freeform bottom and go around the bottom and bottoms to fill it up. And if I hold the shift key, I can reduce this actually. Back under freeform, I'm going to add material on the basal area where I have a little bit of a concave area. Remember, I want to have a convex area on all on four cases. I can do this because the tissue is still malleable, it's still soft. So I can add a little bit of material to create a nice convex area to shape the tissue for my actual final restoration. 
Before I go to merge and safe restoration, I'm gonna click on screw hole. All I'm gonna do here is click off and okay. Then finally click on merge and save to create my merge restoration that I can actually print or mill. I'm not a big fan of how ExoCAD actually outputs the files. ExoCAD outputs it in a construction info file and the actual SDL file. The naming structure is really confusing. So if you wanna rename this, then your construction info file doesn't work anymore. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna click on rename, you're gonna copy the file name from your STL, you're gonna open the construction info file with a Node++ editor, you're gonna go under find, you're gonna put the name of the STL in there, and you're gonna put your new desired name into replace with field. You're gonna copy this because you're gonna need it, then you're gonna click replace all, you're gonna save the construction info file, gonna go back into your design area where you have all the files and you can then rename all the files perfectly. So now what you can do, you can import the construction info file and the naming file to the STL into your mailing storage. If you wanna see the entire clinical workflow on how to make an all on four case in two hours, go to my channel and click on the video. I hope you enjoyed this video and you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and leave a nice comment in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now, hit the notification bell so you get updated on all future videos. I will leave the scans on my Patreon channel where you can download those for free and design this case yourself. I would love to see some screenshots of your design that you can upload actually on my Patreon channel. I know you're really busy, but if you have some time, please go to my Patreon page to support this channel so we can make videos like this together in the future. Until then, stay tuned.